Hey guys, it's Coach Gagalione here, GagalioneStrength.com. Uh, we have another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. We have another strong lady on the line today. How are you doing today, Megan? Good, how are you? Great. Uh, so for the people that maybe aren't familiar with who you are and like where you're from, can you just like introduce yourself really quick and tell us a little bit about, about uh, what you got going on right now? Sure. Uh, my name is Megan Scanlon. I am from Boston, live just outside of Boston. Um, I am a USAPL powerlifter. I uh, started powerlifting about two years ago, I'd say. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much. Cool. So just coming off uh, at the time of this recording, just coming off a nice performance at uh, Nationals, hit a big uh, American record squat, which is awesome. So it's uh, yeah, great. Yeah, very exciting. Very cool. It's very exciting stuff. So. So I just want to I want to rewind a little bit and just kind of hear about like how you got started in like lifting. Where did you like play sports growing up? Like how did you actually get into like strength training with the barbell and kind of what made you start? Right. So I I played sports all growing up. Um, when I was young, I did gymnastics, and then I realized I wasn't going to be uh, the best gymnast in the world. So I switched yeah. over, played soccer. I uh, played throughout college, and that's where I really started to get into lifting a little bit more in college with the strength coach um, that our soccer team had. Should have realized it then. I kind of got by playing collegiate soccer by being athletic rather than being super skilled right. uh, at soccer, and I was always one of the strongest, fittest people on the team, and I took a lot of pride in that because I worked hard at it. Um Ironically, I didn't realize that it should have gone in that direction after college, and I started running uh, after college, did a lot of running, uh, <laughs> did some marathons, some Ironmans, and I just realized I should stop fighting what my body was better at, got some injuries, and that's when I really started lifting more, and I like to be competitive, and that's when I decided to sign up for my first powerlifting competition. Cool. And what was like kind of the timeline from like being like a soccer player, doing some of these like uh, races and kind of doing more endurance stuff to like, you said you just kind of, you know, so you're still kind of relatively new to powerlifting, even though you're, yeah. you know, obviously doing really well. Uh, you were, were you, uh, you were, I don't know, like what place did you take it at, at uh, Nationals uh, this? Um, fifth. Yeah. So fifth and then obviously in a very, 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 <laughs> very <Yeah>. competitive <laughs> weight class to, to say the least, uh, probably. I mean, you could argue it's one of the, um, it was, that was one of the craziest, uh, you know, I mean, I've been involved in powerlifting for 12 years, uh, and I've never seen, like, anything like that as far as uh, multiple women. Uh, were you were you over 500, Wilkes, also? Or? Yeah, just Yeah, so, well, con congratulations. So that's yeah, amazing. So, I mean, a lot of people can go, like, their whole lives and not, like, achieve anything close to that. So, uh, and then the squat was uh, 180 kilos. Mm -hmm. So yep. is that three ninety six? Is that my uh, is my kilo math right? So so pretty, so, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so close. I'm getting a little bit better. Uh, I'm terrible. So <laughs> um, so yeah, just shy of like a four hundred pound squat, which is amazing. So regardless of any body weight, let alone sixty three uh, kg. So how did you like? Uh, so what was kind of like the timeline like from uh, like being an athlete to kind of transitioning into now like your, uh, competitive powerlifting? Uh, so I graduated college 2010. Um, I started running pretty much right after soccer ended. So it was 2010. And then I did my first powerlifting meet in 2000 and the end of 2014, I think. Okay. Um, so, or 2015, yeah, so like two years ago. Um, so there was about like, you know, a uh, five-year span before I started my between soccer and my first powerlifting meet. Um, I'd always lifted, though, just not specifically for powerlifting. For like, for like, to train the, for not, like not for like a one-rep max or anything like that. So, right, um, exactly. Cool. Um, so what was like, I guess, what gave you the itch to like do the first competition? Were, you did, were people like, man, you're really strong, you should do this? Or like what, what was kind of like the thought process like and what, what was going through your head for like your first competition? Yeah, so... You know, I kept thinking about that, and I'm not 100% positive. I think it was a couple of different things. Yep. Um, when I started, um, I'm kind of like strength coach, personal trainer. When I really started doing that, I would rent space out of some warehouse gyms, and some of them were more into powerlifting things than others, so it kind of got me thinking about it. Um, I also, my husband's, one of his best friends is a strength coach, uh, actually at Princeton, and the first time he met me, I'm not even kidding, he goes, so you can squat 300 pounds, right? I was like, this kid's crazy. I was still running, <laughs> had no interest in really squatting, and I was like, well, maybe I would be good if I actually trained for powerlifting. Um, so I just got the wheels kind of turning, and then 
I honestly signed up for my first powerlifting meet. I'm not even sure what federation it was, and I didn't tell anybody. I was so nervous. I didn't tell anybody. I brought my mom with me, um, and it was, like, in some local gym. Um, and after that, I just decided that it was something I was very interested in. The people were awesome. Um, I could be competitive in it, which was exciting for me because I really couldn't be competitive in endurance sports. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what kicked it off. Cool. So w- w- do you remember what your numbers were, like your first competition or like around like where you were like at? and like? Yeah, I think the first competition I squatted around 270. I think I benched like 160 maybe, and then deadlift, I was right around 315, because that was like a big deal for me at the time. Cool. Yeah, yeah. so I, I just think it's, it's always interesting to see, like, I've, I've kind of noticed, especially with the women, like, the the standard and, like, what's, like, kind of, not necessarily normal, but, like, what women are capable of doing now is, like, is, is really kind of exploded uh, really quickly. So was there anything uh, sp- specific that you did? Or style of training, maybe like uh, just some program or whatever that really kind of helped you get from, like I said, still obviously a great squat, but you know, squatting two seventy five and squatting three ninety six is a completely different ball game. Obviously, was there anything specific that you changed, or you just took a little more serious, or how did you kind of like uh, make that that progress so quickly? You know, I would say the first year I made a ton of progress in my squat. Um, it's still progressing relatively quickly, which is awesome because I know that doesn't always happen. Um, I spent a lot of time in, from, say, like, the middle of 2016 to the beginning of 2017, like, really hammering home a lot of technique stuff, um, in specific for powerlifting. Before I was squatting, like, high bar, like, I learned how to squat in college to be athletic, and I wasn't necessarily squatting powerlifting, low bar style, um... And I remember the first time someone told me about, like, bracing, and I was kind of confused, didn't really yeah, know what they meant, like, spend what, what, what just more mean? time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was like, I don't get what you mean, but I'll try my best, you know? Uh, spend a lot more time with the technique stuff. Um, I mean, I know it's not a super, you could say it's not a super technical sport. However, learning the technique goes a long sure. way, you know? Um, and that definitely helps me. And also doing the big three a lot more also helped me <laughs> so just, a lot. So just kind of really hammering home the technique and just a little bit more frequency of the lifts. Uh, yeah. It's it's kind of funny that um because I was uh I don't uh, coach coach her but I was handling uh, uh like Sarah Brennan and uh, she ended up squatting uh, five eighteen which was a PR for her and uh, she like and I was it was funny because like she's just learning how to use the belt. And she, she wasn't like bracing or breathing like properly either. And it just like kind of, it was like, I almost like, it's just like, and, you're, and she's squatting over 500 pounds like this. And it's like, imagine. So, I, yeah. So I think it's really true though. Like once you can dial in those like little, those fundamental things, it really can go like a long way. And yeah. um, just really honing in the techniques. I think a lot of times people get ahead of the, themselves. So I think that's really good advice uh, for people starting out. So. Um, so I know that you kind of went, you were a gymnast, you did, went through soccer, did the endurance thing, uh, over like your whole athletic career and, you know, obviously including powerlifting, have you ever had any setbacks or injuries or problems and what are some like things that you did to kind of like overcome, uh, those I, things? Luckily, I mean, knock on wood here, I've never had any major injuries throughout my whole life. Um, some of it, I know it was probably luck and genetics. Um, and some of it is I was lucky growing up that, at the time when I was in high school, it wasn't super popular to do like strength and conditioning outside of your sport, but my mom wanted me to do a program so I wouldn't get hurt, you know? Um, she got sold on the whole injury prevention thing, which definitely, obviously, is true. Um, yeah. So I kind of lucked out that way where I got it earlier on. Um, I would say my biggest setback actually came relatively recently, about two years ago. Um, I started powerlifting. That first year, I was still running. So I was training for powerlifting meet and trying to train for a marathon. I ended up hurting my hip. I literally had trouble walking <laughs> and I was in denial that anything was wrong of course because everything was going so well uh, both running and lifting wise so I had to take a huge step back I couldn't even I couldn't deadlift for months um couldn't like hip hinge that was a very painful motion for me um so I focused on everything I could do without pain um and I still trained for a meet and I went into the meet deadlifting I think three or four times before the meet happened just because that's how long it took for me to get to that point where I was not in pain um and decided that I would be as competitive as I could with my squat with my bench and just 
do what I could in the deadlift, you know. Um, it was kind of nice because it kept the competitive juices flowing because I knew what I could do squatting and benching. And then I just said, deadlifts, I'll do whatever I can, you know. Um, so I just focused on what I could do and knew eventually I it would all come together again. Cool. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. I think a lot of times when people, uh, they want like everything to be perfect like all the time. They want – so like maybe – you couldn't train deadlift, but then your squat and bench training was going good, and or you know that could, maybe you could it flips sometimes. And I think it's really that's really great advice for anyone listening. If you do have an injury, or it doesn't necessarily have to be an injury, it could be like a life situation, or whatever. Do the best you can, work on what you can, and uh, there's always something you could do to get better. I think that's uh, huge advice for anyone listening, and it's really great to hear that you did that. So very cool. Um, other things I wanted to talk to you about. I know that it looks like. Uh, you know, I know like we kind of just met and started talking about just kind of watching some of the stuff you've been doing. Uh, you work with some people online. You've, you've done some, you said you were do, doing some personal training and things like that. Um, I also kind of just noticed that you do like some of, uh, I guess, I don't know if functional training is the right word, but I, I actually, a lot of people don't know, but I come from a wrestling and football background. Uh, so I've been, an, I've been powerlifting for 12 years, but I also, I coach football, I coach wrestling. I, um, I don't know if you could see some of the pictures behind me, but coached many uh, athletes for strength and conditioning over the years and so it's cool to like uh, see you use I guess some of the different movements not just only traditional powerlifting movements so maybe just t tell us a little bit about like your background uh, just as a trainer like what you do and maybe like how that's maybe influenced just how you train also for powerlifting and maybe how you incorporate some of that stuff uh, into your training currently. Yeah, so, I mean, just growing up, again, playing sports, I got a lot of those different movements in. Um, in college, I was really lucky. I actually transferred when I was in the middle of college, but I was very lucky at both schools to have great strength and conditioning coaches. Um, and I was actually an exercise science major, and I had great cool. practical classes, you know, where I got a lot of that stuff, had great internships. So I just had a lot of exposure to different types of training, Um both strength training as well as more of the agility, conditioning, plyometric stuff as well. Um, and then I've always incorporated it into my training no matter what I'm doing, mostly because I feel like if you're training for whether it's running or you're training for lifting, it's super repetitive. Um, obviously, it's the nature of the sport and it's important, but I think it's important I've found for myself at least when I'm farther away from a meet and I'm more in that general phase of training, it's helpful for me both mentally, but also I do think it helps with injury prevention, training in different directions, you know, not just moving in the same direction the whole entire time. Um, doing things on one leg and not always being on two legs all the time. Um, I found it to be a huge help, not just, again, building strength, but I mean, for instance, after nationals, started training again, was doing single leg stiff leg deadlifts. Um, I did it with my left leg first, and then I went to my right leg. I could not even do one rep of the same weight. It was so, mind blowing because yeah, I yeah. on two legs had no idea, you know. Um, so I don't know. I think both mentally, it's a it's nice and refreshing to move in different directions when you're farther away from the meet, but also it definitely helps me realize what my weaknesses are as well. Cool. I think that's uh, good advice. You know, I think the variety and the variations, like again, uh, it's just kind of when to you know use them. So obviously, close to yeah. a meet, it should be more specific, right? So you should be going heavier. You should be using the competition lifts, all that stuff. But there's nothing wrong with like, how about like being able to like move your body weight, doing some push ups and pull ups and single leg work. I think especially for powerlifting, the single leg stuff is great. Just for it's not, is it going to make you squat 900? Probably not, but it's going to make you healthier. Um, and sometimes you don't even realize, like you said, you don't even realize that you have these imbalances. Um, I know, I know for me, like I've had injuries in the past for like wrestling and football. And, uh, I, you know, I tore my hamstring my senior year in football doing some sprints. And, uh, like I was always a little bit like just kind of crooked for like the first couple of years, like kind of coming back from that. And, uh, a lot of times you don't, you don't really know until you try. And I also just think, you know, in general, like just for health, like you should be able to move your own body weight. You should be able to do, uh, you know, push ups and pull ups and these and these sorts of things. And uh, obviously, you know, maybe when you get to some super heavyweight type situation, a little bit different. But I think for just general health and balance and longevity, I think that's like really great advice. So uh, just kind of going off that, I also wanted to talk about like uh, like the type of people that you work with uh, for your business and how you help people and like how did you? I know you said you were an exercise science major. How did you get into training others? Uh, What's your approach like? And then just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I went to college thinking I wanted to be a physical therapist. Um, I started training in college, but I still thought I wanted to be a physical therapist. And it wasn't until after when I did 
worked as a PTA, I did some internships, I knew it really wasn't for me. Um, I had always been involved with training, did some internships in strength and conditioning facilities, but I didn't really like go fully into it yep. and probably like two years after college, you know, when I was like, this is actually what I want to do. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily the easiest path <laughs> to make a career out of, um, which sounds kind of silly, but to be really good at it, it takes some patience. Um, because you need the experience, you yep. know, both with yourself, but also training others and getting to realize how people react to different things. Um, I've been kind of lucky in the fact that I've been able to train a wide range of people. So I've worked with high school athletes. I've worked with college athletes, um, someone training for the Olympics, as well as 70-year-old men and women, you know. So it's been a wide range of people. Um, most of my people are... You know, just your average person that want to get stronger and want to get more physically fit to be healthy. Um, and then I try to, I guess my approach is I'm try, I always like to prove to people that they can do so much more than they think. Because I think that they just settle. People settle, you know, and they don't even realize they're doing it. And it's because they haven't been active in such a long time. And when they realize what they're capable of... It's such a cool thing. There's like a light bulb that goes off. You know what I mean? And it, it sparks them to do things they wouldn't normally do. I've had clients do powerlifting meets that would never do it. Or clients that have run half marathons that would have never done it. Because they believe that they can, you know. And they want to go through the process and achieve that. Um, and I think it's cool. Because when you're little, you play sports, you know. And you achieve so many things outside of school. But when you're older and you're working, you don't necessarily have that same type of achievement outside of work. And it's cool to have that, you know. Yeah, and I know it's great. I think um, I think it's uh, cool you mentioned about like having like your kind of everyday person do a powerlifting meet. That's something that's kind of like what powerlifting for the people is all about. It's like yes, I do work with some of these high level people, but just having someone like deadlift ninety five or one thirty five for the first time, or bench the bar for the first time, and then seeing them like their reaction, like adding five pounds or ten pounds every week or whatever the case may be. Every, it's just all about that personal growth, I think. And I think that's like really the best thing about training and fitness and all that stuff. And what's great about like the barbell sports is you can really see that progress right away where sometimes with a physique change or something like that, um, it takes a little bit longer and it can be harder. But, you know, you can see, okay, I added five pounds this week or I did one more rep and it's very tangible and it gives them a little bit of a performance goal and then they end up getting healthier and having the aesthetics to go along with it, which is great. So very cool. Um, so, so you do that. I know you said, um, I wanted to also just maybe talk about like your family life a little bit, if you don't mind. And I think a lot of people, maybe when they get married or have kids and all this stuff, maybe they tend, uh, again, not with everyone, but some people, their, their kind of fitness kind of gets, go, goes on hold. Uh, so can you talk about like how you balance, obviously like, you know, besides like, you're not really just dabbling in it anymore. Like you hit an American record squat, which is fantastic. So you obviously are putting some time and effort into this, right? It's not like. So can you tell me a little about like how your what your training looks like, how much time you spend, and then maybe just balancing like just you know being you know uh, you know a family person and and having a career and, and all that all that stuff. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a skill, and it's definitely something I've gotten better with as I've been involved um, with it longer. I guess um, I'm very lucky that I had and I've always had a very supportive family um, growing up and right now like my husband's super supportive of what I do um, he's well, he's been there for 17 hour Ironmans and for 7 hour <laughs> powerlifting meets nice. so I just really lucked out that way um, in terms of a support system I know not everyone has that and I think that's obviously an added challenge um, my workouts vary depending on where I am kind of in the training cycle but I'm usually working out for you know an hour to an hour and a half Sometimes I get into a zone and I'm working out for two hours. Right. Um, I think the biggest thing is I do very well being scheduled. So I stick to that. You know, I, I do very well being a little bit on the busier side and having a schedule to stick to. But I also think that an important part of that on the flip side is when you have that free time to spend with your friends or your family that you you're there, you know, like you're spending your free time with them and you're really communicating with them and you're not worrying about the other stuff. Yeah. Um, so just kind of being in the moment, I guess, when you are. Yeah, you know, yeah I think I think that's a good point and I know it's something I struggle with sometimes being a business owner. Like you could be physically present but not necessarily being emotionally or mentally present. So <laughs> when it's time to train, like you're getting after it but then when it's, okay, this is family time, you know, I'm not on like whatever, I'm not on social media, I'm not, I'm not worried about work. It's like, 
now my now my attention and my focus is on you. And I think it's good. I think it is a hard balance. But I think at the end of the day, yeah. if you prioritize what's important and you make a schedule, I think that a lot of times people just they get really overwhelmed and then they kind of freeze up. But sometimes you got to take a step back. Okay, let's maybe put this on paper. You know, I use a ton of alarms and stuff. I don't know if you guys, you know, I use like my calendar all the time for scheduling these things. Um, otherwise, things fall through the cracks. But uh, yeah. especially when it comes to your friends. Yeah very bad at when I first started <laughs> like I to go off on my own and start my own business I was very bad at that um it's easy to get overwhelmed and get like sucked into it you know but it's funny because when you do figure it out and figure what schedule what works for you the best you're better at, in all aspects you know what I mean all aspects of your life I feel yeah. like um just kind of cool very cool uh, another question I always like to ask people you know um let's say you have maybe someone maybe it's a client you're working with or maybe it's just your friend or whatever but it's a woman, they're starting out, they're trying to get into strength training, they're not really sure where to start, maybe they want to dabble in some powerlifting, maybe they want to compete, they're not really sure, like, what's a good starting point for people and what advice can you give someone that maybe is just, just getting into, like, lifting and strength and, and just maybe fitness in general? Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you're first starting, the most important thing is just to be consistent, um, to set a realistic goal. If you can go into the gym two times a week and you know that's all you have, then make that your goal. Um, get into the gym two times a week and be consistent with that. If you know that grows over time, great. But don't set an unrealistic goal to start because it's again you want to set goals that you can meet. Um, also, take your time. I know it's hard again with the social media and everything else. It doesn't happen overnight. I kind of lucked out where I think I got into it right before social media got huge, or maybe I'm just behind in the time. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I could see how that. You know, there's so much going on in social media that you think that people started there yeah. and that's really couldn't be farther from the truth. I think over time what will be cool with social media is you'll see people from the beginning to the end, you know, of their journey in the yeah. in lifting. Um, but definitely take your time. If you are going to get a coach, find someone that you trust, um, both in their knowledge of the movements, but also trust as a person. I think that's super important. Um but also know that if you want to get into lifting and you want to squat bench and deadlift, that when you start to squat the first day you walk into the gym, you're not going to probably go underneath the barbell if you've never squatted before, you know? And I think that's a tough thing, especially if it is a group setting. Um, you're training with more than one person and you have people that are stronger and then you have someone that's just starting off and it's like, okay, we're going to have you sit to the box and stand back up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but that you're going to progress very quickly. You're going to understand the movements and you're going to be so much better for that. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, we had a, a one of our members. Uh, he's he's a father. He was a wrestler, and I remember. Uh, and he was just a little little taller guy, like bigger guys, so a little tight. And I remember uh, his first couple of weeks, like struggling with like um, you know one eighty five on a box. And like we have some girls that squat like four hundred pounds at our gym, so it's kind of like it gets it could be like a little frustrating, especially if you're like a guy and you see some girl like you know squatting three or four plates next to you. Um, but now he's squatting like close to 600 pounds, you know, you know, it's, it just, like you said, just take your time, you know, don't, don't rush into it. I think that that's really, really great advice. Um, I also want to kind of maybe, maybe I'm reading into this a little bit, but I just know, I noticed also you said, set a goal of just going two times per week. Uh, so one thing I'm, I'm really big on goal setting also, I think that there's many layers and sometimes people kind of argue with what's right and wrong. So I like to like have like a smarter goal where it's you know specific and measurable and all that good stuff. But I also think you need to have like daily and weekly action. So those are like your more process oriented stuff. So uh, when you're like working with people, like do you tend to focus more on like the habits or like you know? Because I know like for me, like sometimes with, especially with newer people, like you said, all right, let's just like show up twice a week and like nail that. I think that's a really good point because I think sometimes people get like too far ahead of themselves and maybe. The, I, I'm all for like a lofty goal, but sometimes if it's like way out in outer space, it gets it's like it's too like far far away to like kind of be. Uh, it could be even demotivating if it's like too crazy. So, uh, what are your thoughts on like goal setting and and things like that? Maybe what what do you do like for your even yourself? Um, I love goal setting. I think it's super important uh, for everybody, no matter yeah. if it's a small goal, big goal, whatever. I think it's very important one to keep you on task to keep you. Um, what do you want to call it? I keep. I have no idea what word I'm going for so right now. So maybe your your focus or just say like yeah. stay on target. Yeah, stay on target. Yeah. Um, but I huge fan of setting like uh, weekly goals, kind of monthly goals, and then big picture goals too. Yeah. You know, I 
sometimes I'm trying to get better at it to kind of share my goals with others because I think that it's helpful for people to see others people's goals um and kind of what they go for um in terms of sometimes I set goals and in my own mind it sounds ridiculous but they end up over time if you work towards it it will you will progress and you will get closer and closer and closer uh at the beginning of this year one of my big goals was to squat 400 pounds and I thought at the beginning of this year if that was a somewhat lofty and ridiculous goal to say out loud in a competition at that point I think I was at 358 you know um but I'd seen consistent progress but the saying 400 out loud to me was very scary you know yeah, sure. did I get there no but I got pretty close you know there's still a couple months left maybe I'll just YOLO in the gym one time <laughs> to get my just, 400 yeah, pounds yeah, just, right, just, end, just make, make it official <laughs> Three, three, it's 396 is like, close close enough in my book but <laughs> Um, but yeah, I definitely, once people get the pattern of just getting into the gym, I definitely like to sit them down and talk about goals. And for me, it's, I like for them to be the, in the driver's seat. So if it's a strength goal, let's set strength goals. If it's a physique goal, let's set physique goals, weight loss, fat loss, you know, or whatever it may be. I like them to be in the driver's seat. And then I just like to help them in terms of what's realistic for the time period. Cool. Yeah, and I'll just like kind of you know use myself as an example too because I, I recently kind of put myself out there or something. I've been trying to like get leaner and stuff. Uh, so my, my goal is to deadlift six seventy five and uh, weigh two seventy five. So I actually I uh, w- w- pre water cut I weighed two seventy seven, uh, and then uh, I pulled six sixty at my meet. So like I said, it's kind of like I technically like failed my goal, but like I didn't, I didn't like fail my goal. You know what I mean? So I think. So, you know, so I think it's like, I think that was a really good point. It's like you set out to, I want to squat 400, you know, squat 396, still pretty good. You could celebrate that and count that as a win. Because I think sometimes people get too critical and right. about themselves. And like I said, it's an old saying, like, you know, if you shoot for the stars, end up at the moon, like that's st- still pretty good. So I think that's a great way to look at it. And like, yeah, and like if maybe your your time frame was, was th- over here and if you got to extend it out a little bit, there's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the right. day, you're making progress. Right. That, that's a good thing. So right. I think that was really cool. So awesome. Yeah. I set, I set the same goal for deadlift. Didn't get quite as close on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but honest to God, I was so the worst deadlifter in the flight of prime time. Like, by yeah, well, I mean, I mean, you, you ha- I mean, you had, so you had some happy. stiff competition, but. <laughs> I was so happy, though, <clears throat> when I pulled 380 and it was the most I ever pulled. I was yeah, like, no, that's, that's great. Like, this is amazing. Uh, <laughs> but same respect, like, yeah, I set a goal of 400, which I knew for deadlift was a little lofty, but I'm so much closer than I was. Yeah. And then now I believe that I'm going to get 400. You know what I mean? Like, there's no question in mind that I'll eventually get there. No, I think that's good. And I think, like, at, at the end of the day, it's like, if you're, like, you know, my, my business coach always talks about, like, the football analogy. It's like, you don't always need, like, a Hail Mary if you're getting three yards at a clip. Like, you're moving the chains. So you're, right. get, you're getting that much closer to that 400, and, like, that's... That's making you a little bit better. You're getting a little bit better. You're kind of climbing the ranks. Um, but this was your, and this was your, I'm, I'm assuming this is your fir- was your first nationals also. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. yeah to, to get to get on, to get on, you know, your first nationals and medal, especially in like that class. I mean, you should be really proud. Not to like you know, uh, <laughs> blow you up too much, but uh, but really you should be proud. I mean, that's like unbelievable. Uh, like I said, I mean, in my 12 years, I've never seen anything like that, um, especially for you know women that light. You know, let alone you know so. Uh, very, very impressive stuff. Um, yeah, so um, I think that's a, a good place to close out unless you have any like parting words. But uh, tell tell the listeners, the people that are watching, uh, where can they find more about you? I know you do some like online coaching and stuff like that. So anything that like, you want to plug or where can they follow you on like social to learn more about you and what, what you do? Yeah, so um, I definitely do the most stuff on Instagram um, in terms of social. My Instagram is MegScanLift. Isn't it a cool play on words? I'll get it. Yes, it's Meg great. Scanlon, yes, you know? Yes, so <laughs> Instagram is I got it. <laughs> carried into that one. That was good. Yeah. Um, then, um, my online training stuff is fosterfitnessonline.com. Not as creative, <laughs> but still good. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, definitely uh, give Meg a follow. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of you. Uh, like I said, it was really great uh, seeing you at nationals and seeing you do so well and I'm looking forward to see your progress and see uh, see you hit those uh, 400 uh, squat and 400, 400 deadlift next competition. So, congrats! Yeah, thank you. Yeah, congrats on all your success, uh, guys. Uh, guys and uh, and girls who are watching, uh, please give this a five star review. Please subscribe on iTunes. It helps other people find us. 
Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.